This is what he's showing Abraham. When you make this move, when you walk in on this path of truth and purpose, when you look at your salvation in the eye, when I show you this concept of salvation, through this process, your brother's going to see it. Future generations going to know about it. And they will begin to shape and mold their lives in your example. I'm going to show you this to you. They're going to shape and mold their lives in the example that you set, such that your life, walking in the path of the Lord, with purpose and in truth, became an example, such that the entire world, the entire earth now, has shifted according to one name. The way that people live, instead of being dead, the way that people live, the whole culture, their whole existence, their whole life, it will shift in the example of one man's obedience to the truth. One man's commitment to live out a path of greatness. That's the blessing, dude. It's in the purpose. the guy on his eyes just once. They, he's in the promised land, the land of Canaan. They say he's going to the Niger. 
I told you that the Negev is a desert within the promised land. Even still to this day, it's considered to be a very arid uh, uh, area. There's no water and stuff, man. It's, it's straight desert. This place called the Negev. So it's telling you, and then you also find that Christ also then had to go into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. We also find that Moses also left out of Egypt to go into the desert for 40 years. <coughs> so he is there within his promise, but the Lord says, though you are there, you're looking salvation in the eye, you haven't achieved it yet, you got a process to go through. So he tries to take him to the Negev, of the desert, because the desert is a place, man, where you can purify yourself. See? How many bad habits about to follow you to the desert? Y'all with me? No. How many of the people that you got hanging around you, when it start going all bad, you got no resources, they're going to follow you there? So when you got all your resources, man, you're doing good things all around you. You got all your bad habits rocking in. But when it start to dry up, then what? He's taking Abram because it says, first of all, he had instructed them to leave with nothing. But what did it say? He took everything, including his nephew Lot. He wasn't supposed to take none of that. Took Lot, man. Lot wasn't going to be loyal to him. See? That's why he's sending them to the desert. Oh, y'all don't relate to the desert? Okay. Good. Good. Because I was going to go back to the ark. <laughs> so y'all understand the desert. See, he brought a lot with him. He put one supposed to bring him. Then it said he brought all types of persons with him, slaves that he had. He bringing a bunch of baggage, man. Talking about, oh, I got, I got to go, but I got to take this and this and this baggage, man. Because how you going to rely on the promise of the Lord, and yet you bringing all your bags and suitcases, your Gucci bags and stuff? No. Then Christ came and he said, man, the son of man don't have nowhere to lay his head, man. He never walked with no bags or nothing. He went to where he was going, man, and was there. Fact. And some of us, man, we know what that's like. Go there and things to take you care of. But you in the desert, man, because you needed to lose some of that bad company, man. Some of the baggages need to be left. Yeah, because they're going to start to get heavy when you ain't got no water to drink. Some of that stuff you thought was so important to keep with you, when you see your life leaving out of you, you haven't had no food or no water. All them people that you wanted to keep with you, man, your guys, your homies, that you should have been left. They're crawling around you, man, having good times. Now he's gonna take you through a desert so you can see what it is to walk alone. What it is to know at the end of it all, when I had nothing, only God saw me through the desert. I'm trying to show you. But you can die in the desert. That's a fact. I'm trying to carry on in bags. <laughs> hey! You might not make it out the desert, man. You're trying to keep everything with you. Look up. You're in the desert, man. You can't find your way to go. Look up. I guarantee you, you receive direction. Hold this. Hold this. So he's going to the Niger, but then they said it was a famine in the land. I just want you to hope this, this is the most major thought that I had coming out of this. I'm done, gentlemen. I'm telling you. I know I'm wearing you out because I'll be going in there deep. But I'm going to drop this final thought, man. We can save some for another time. But just hold this, okay? He's going to the Niger, which is a desert. He know that's where he headed. He know it ain't going to be much there. The desert, nothing. He know where he headed. He in the promised land, the land that he inherited. He know he is close, man. He looking at the salvation, but it ain't time for him to come into it yet. He quick, he can't quite see it though. Those of us who read it, on hindsight, we can say, Abraham, right there. But Abraham don't know that. That's the point, man. It's called faith. 
Oh, y'all heard that concept before. See, we can read Abraham's story and try to be all smart about it and say he was right there. But Abraham didn't know that, that he was looking salvation straight in the eyes, man. So he led it to the desert. <laughs> well, he's going to find out a lot. He's supposed to find out a lot. Some of that baggage and all the people he got with him, lot and all them folks and stuff, they're going to drop to the side. That's where he's supposed to go. But then a famine hits in the land. He decides because of the famine, basically no food, no water, stuff like that. Y'all got it? Because of the famine, instead of going to the desert, he's going to go to Egypt. Does it make sense to anyone in here? You already headed for the desert where you know there's no resources. And then a famine hits in the land, you say, oh, there's no resources. Let me go to Egypt. Wait. If you got a plan to head to a place with no resources, and then something happens where the resources get low right before you get there, why does that bother you? What you didn't see before when I read it. These are the satanic temptations, man, that present something to you that's difficult to cause you to go another way when you gotta go this way. And a lot of times, man, when you look back at it, you're like, that was just so stupid, it made no sense. He presented him where he was going, but a little bit early. He said, man, we in famine, we, we run out of resources, let's go to Egypt and try to get some. Bro, you're going to the desert, man. But the whole point that the Lord is trying to show you is I want to strip you of these resources so that you understand sometimes you got to stand alone in this life, man, with nothing to be great. Sometimes to be great in this life, you got to stand alone with nothing. Hit them a little bit early because I'm going to tell you this. If you've ever been in any situation, like, for instance, like, athletes and stuff like that, man, they be playing all day and stuff, they get all hurt and injured and stuff, they put them in the tub. The water is kind of like slightly cold. Y'all seen it before or y'all done it before? Yes? Okay. Water is slightly cold. They put them in there. They sit in there. It's healing them up. And then they start to put ice and dump more ice into the water to make it super cold. But they didn't put the ice in before they got in. Did they? No. Because if they put the ice in and it was super cold, they won't be able to get in. Y'all following me now? The healing process, the healing process, if I put you right in it, you can't stand it. You got it? If I put you right in it, you can't stand it. What I'll do is, I'm going to put you in where it's not so bad. And then I'll start to put the ice in there. And it's going to get colder and colder, but your body will gradually adapt to it. You got that? So y'all with me now? Amen. So he give him the famine before he gets to the desert. Because I can introduce this to you slowly so that when you get to the desert, you ready for it. Because if you get to the desert and you ain't been through no famine, you won't survive it. You won't know, oh, I need to drop some of this stuff. Oh, I can't take all these people with me. You will know. But through this famine, I can show you it. And when you get to the desert, you would have picked up some more knowledge, man, to be able to survive. Y'all got it? No, the famine hit him, and what did he do? Go to Egypt. Anytime you are in here in the Bible, when you read it, if they say they went to Egypt, that means that they had doubt in their faith. They went back. Plot. First of all, the Lord's promise was, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. Long life, I'm going to satisfy you. I'm going to multiply you with a lot of children. He ain't had no children yet. Is that correct? He hasn't had any children. The Lord promised him he was going to do that. Then, if the Lord promised you that, why when you get to Egypt, you say they're going to kill you? How can that be? Then the Lord is a liar? Or you doubt? Which one? No, which one? You doubt. 
And he told you he was going to multiply you, then they're not going to be able to kill you in Egypt. They can't kill you in Egypt if the promise is you ought to be great. So he goes to Egypt and he went back, scheming and plotting again, thinking on his own. Instead of staying close to God, thinking of his own thing, what will work? What can I do that's smart here? How can I get out of this situation? They're going to kill me. Well, listen, you just, you look, say you my sister. And he lied. Then his wife gets, he got to watch his wife get done in by, by the uh, Pharaoh. Watch his wife getting plugged by Pharaoh. And then they're going to give him some uh, donkeys and stuff. And I guess you know, well, then it worked out. He still wants to go to the desert. More stuff to carry, dude. More stuff to carry. The faith lesson, gentlemen. The faith lesson. And this is it. The faith lesson, and this is it. You may be headed somewhere rough, man. But on the other side, you will see that you're looking at salvation and I trust me. You may be going through a very, very rough spot. But you stick to it and do it the right way, man. Your salvation is right there. I'm telling you this. I've been there, man. I've been there. All the way there. And a couple times, I started to scheme and plot. And it took me long. But when I finally said, no, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to stick this one out and do it right. I saw me. I promise you that, man. I wouldn't stand here. I wouldn't be here before you. I stuck that out. I didn't start to say, I'm about to hustle again and scheme and plot again, man. I'm not going back to Egypt no more, man. I did it two or three times, man. I done humiliated myself and others. Trying to get ahead, man, because I saw a little difficulty, man. Instead of going straight to where I was supposed to go, man, I got distracted. I went to the side. I got tempted, man. I went back on my faith. No, you had it toward tough times. Go straight into the desert. You're going to come out lighter and cleaner. You're going to lose some of that baggage and them temptations, man. Go straight to the desert. Go into it. Going to it. And all of that stuff, man, is going to drop to the side. And listen, watch this. When you go into the desert all the way, it says Christ went in there 40 days and 40 nights. He was tempted three times by Satan for various greatness. Remember that? It said he went into the desert. He didn't eat nothing for 40 days and 40 nights, man. Serious circumstance, man. That we're looking at. No, y'all are famine right now. See, we be doing famine. Then we get diverted. No, the desert going to be a little tougher, man. I'm, prom I'm promising you that. But why, why would I lie to you? You saw only famine. But he goes into the desert, man, nothing for 40 days and 40 nights, man. But Satan tempted him because he knew on the other side he was going to see salvation. Facts. He said, you can be great. Man, I can give you money. I can put you to the top of the world. Turn this rock into bread. Remember that? 40 days and 40 nights, man, he withstood. He withstood every temptation, man. Mm -hmm. You in famine? That's fine. Go to the desert. And then, you emerge on the other side. And that's when Christ came out and he said he started causing the blind to see Causing the dead to rise, making the lame walk, and he lived. Gentlemen, going to the desert, man, and he's gonna show you his salvation.
Amen.